Hi, I'm Erin Manning. I'm a professional photographer, and I also host the television show called The Whole Picture, where I teach people how to take better photographs with their digital camera. I'm also writing a book right now, and I'm really excited about it. It's part of the Photo Workshop series. It'll be out this fall, and it's all about what I like to do best, and that's taking pictures of people. It's called Portraits and Candids. I hope you check it out. Okay, here's my top 10 list of do's and don'ts. Number one, don't place your subject right in the middle of frame. Now this is great for the perfunctory passport photograph or driver's license, but it's not so great for a visually interesting photograph. I want you to consider the rule of thirds. Now this is a compositional rule where you divide your scene visually into thirds and you place something of interest at one of those little intersections. When you do this, you'll create a much more dynamic photograph. Number two, don't force a child to strike a pose or say cheese because that's a really unnatural looking photograph. What you want to do is engage them in doing something. Have fun, play around. This is how you capture an authentic moment in a great candid photograph. Number three, don't let your subjects wear clothing with busy patterns or logos on them because that just distracts from the total picture. Instead, encourage them to wear solid colors, maybe something that enhances their eyes. That way, the focus is on them in the picture, not that crazy wild 70s shirt. Number four, don't let your subjects look like red-eyed monsters in your photographs. Now, red-eye happens when you're in a low-light situation like a party and your pupils enlarge to let in more light, but the on-camera flash on the camera reflects the red of your retina right back into the lens. Not pretty. Instead, use the red-eye reduction feature on your camera. This gives two or three flashes, which will close down the pupil and reduce the amount of red-eye that shows up in your photograph. Number five, don't take all your pictures from the same distance and the same angle. This gets really boring, so I want you to mix it up, okay? Take pictures from different angles, from up above looking down on your subject, or down below looking up at your subject, or far away, and then get up really close and take detail shots. Now when you put all these pictures together in a scrapbook or a photo album, they'll be much more interesting because they tell a story. Number six, don't forget to flash your subject. Not that kind of flash, I'm talking about the flash on your camera. You can actually use your flash in the middle of the day to get rid of those harsh shadows across faces or just fill in the darkness when your subject is standing in front of a bright background. Number seven, don't overlook the quality of the light. Soft light and hard light. Soft light happens in the morning and the late afternoon. Hard light is at high noon when that harsh sun is right overhead. That's not a good time to shoot. So instead, shoot early in the morning or late in the afternoon, or if you have to shoot in the middle of the day, move your subject into open shade, like under a tree or the shade of a porch. Number eight, don't stand really close to your subject and use that wide angle setting on your lens. This creates a distorted big nose effect and it's just not pretty. So instead what you need to do is step back and then zoom in with your lens to fill the frame with your subject. This creates a much more flattering photograph. Number nine, 
don't shoot your subject in front of a busy background. Now we've all seen those pictures where plants are coming out of people's ears or poles are coming out of their heads. Not good. Instead, when you're composing your picture, look around your subject and make sure there's nothing distracting going on. If there is, move your subject somewhere else. If that still doesn't work, here's a tip. Have a friend or family member hold a blanket or a throw behind your subject and you can zoom in close and that really helps to simplify the background. Think less is more. Number 10, last but not least, don't miss out on those magical photographic moments because you ran out of battery juice or you ran out of capacity on your memory card. Be prepared. Always carry an extra charged battery with you and make sure you have enough capacity on your memory card to capture all those wonderful moments. Those were the top 10 tips. I hope you learned a lot, but if you'd like to find out more, you have to get the book. It's called Portraits and Candids. It's part of the photo workshop series and it comes out this fall.